So let me mess this up uh, homiletically and uh, do it outside of typical style because I've got something to say to you. Is that all right? I said, is that all right? Now, eventually where we're landing up is the book of 1 Timothy. But I'm going to take the scenic route there. Uh, and we're going to end up at 1 Timothy, the first chapter. And I'm going to preach verse 18 and 19. Before I do, though, I'd like you to join me with great Valium and encourage the person that is closest to you and say these words with tremendous profundity and brevity, if you will. Will you look at them and say, there's a word over you? Will you say that? I, um, I didn't quite like that. I'd like you to say it like there's fire in your mouth and, and, and just reaffirm and validate and affirm and confirm that no matter what's going on in and around them, there is a word over them. Come on, tell them there's a word over them. Now, your neighbor's not receiving that, so why don't you just put your hand on your chest and just remind yourself right now in faith, there is still a word over me. Come on. Mm -hmm. I'd like you to know before I go forward that wherever there is a war, there was a word first. That the war that precedes a season is because of a word that pre-existed. And then the war, the war that happens after a word is called backlash. But there is a word over you it, concerning everything in your life. Say, yes, there is. And aren't you glad that we serve a speaking God? In case you had not realized, this is, in fact, a prophetic church. We are a prophetic people. And uh, we know that there have been charlatans and, and weird doctrine and strange, bizarre happenings around it. But we are a seeing and a hearing people. Say, yes. A part of the baptism of the Holy Ghost, one of the fruit and the manifestation is not that we just get to speak in unknown tongues. We get to hear and we get to see and we get to sense and we get to perceive from God. It is our inheritance. And in Deuteronomy chapter 29, verse 29, the Bible says the secret things belong to the Lord. Watch this. But whatever he reveals belongs to us and our children forever. That means that once something leaves heaven and comes down as an information channel to you, it is your property. It is in your custodianship. You are the guardian of whatever God reveals. And many people that have words over their lives are not seeing manifestation, not because God is not committed to his word, but because we serve a generation that receives passively. It, it, it works like this, that if something is declared over us and if something is prophesied over us, that we think that our only job is to receive. But when you are an active recipient, you align yourself with the word say yes you position yourself with the word say yes you prepare yourself for the word scream yes so when the word of the lord doesn't come to pass over your life it may or may not be the prophet's fault it may be an improper posture once the word of the lord was received it is mine god revealed it so it's mine god said it so it's mine and not only is it mine it belongs to whatever is coming after me the secret things that are revealed now i'm going to try to give you this I'm, again this is not my text but i'm going to say it and because i love the word of god i may get drunk while reading it but in isaiah 55 the bible says as the snow falls from heaven and comes to the earth and does not return so will my word be that goeth forth out of my mouth it will accomplish God be praised. <laughs> Whatever I send it to do, a couple of factors. That means that once the word of the Lord hits the earth, it does not go back. It does not go back. There will be no refund on the word of the Lord. God, I praise you. There will be no return on the word of the Lord. It will not. That means if it's ever hit your life, watch me. I'm talking about from the time you parted your mother's womb, every prophetic utterance, we'll get there in a minute, everything that came out of God's mind concerning you, if it has not happened, it's still in the process of happening. What I'm going to do this morning is pull you out of discontentment over prophetic words that have not come to pass. Ass, pull you out of that despair because it seems like you're waiting for nothing it still will happen get you a praise partner real quick let's flip this building upside down smack them and say it's still going to happen it's still going to happen now at this point i'm not talking to your intellect and i'm not talking to your mind i'm not talking to your cerebral self or your psychological self
yourself. I'm not talking to your career or your education. I'm not talking to your knowledge. I'm talking to your faith. And faith is coming alive now for the future. Shout, it's coming to pass. Oh, yeah. So prophecy, the prophetic word of God. It's the reason we have a Bible, Valencia. God talks. He talks and he journals and he writes. Watch this. This is still intro. And because this is God's nature, he is a talkative spirit and a talkative being. And when people tell you God ain't talking like that, it's because they don't know him that much. He's always talking. <laughs> it's interesting that the people that preach against prophecy don't prophesy, but I'm going to move forward. So we have a talking God. He's talking now. He's talking now. And he has different ways that he talks. It's getting good. He did different means that he's talking. He's so God that he doesn't even need you to be woke to talk to you. He'll, he'll touch that pillow in a hot minute. Oh, yes, he will. My Bible said in Job 33 that when a man falls asleep upon his bed, God doth open his ear to hide him from destruction with a dream in the night. That means, watch me, that there is a tendency for the human nature to be asleep and the ear to be locked during the day. Mm -hmm. And when God can get your undivided attention when you are snoring, he opens the ear. Why is the ear closed? Because during the day, it's captive by need and captive by gossip and captive by chatter and captured by the 34 categories of witchcraft and the occult. It's captured by that stuff. So when you sleep and your senses are at ease, your mind is not wandering or roaming or uh, meandering, God will give you dreams in the night vision. Now, every dream that comes to your mind is not from God. Sometimes it's pizza. Sometimes it's fear. Sometimes it's necromancy. You understand me? All right. Amen to God. God ain't gave you a dream that you're going to marry me if I'm married. Clap your hands for truth. Or I'll go by myself. The only problem with that man is that the Lord ain't told me nothing. Come on, put those hands together. I feel a shifting in here. We got to purify this prophetic stuff. We need a pure prophetic stream. Hallelujah. God's got a word and his word ain't your opinion. Come on, put those hands together that he doesn't put your desire on me. That's what you call a witch. Anyway, and so we have several things and several areas that we can be entrusted with. God speaks to us. The only reason you're here is because God speaks to us. How many of you understand that? The problem is now, though, we're learning that we've got to do more than hear and write. When the word of the Lord comes to us, it's not just about lifting our hands and falling out. Because God talks, and because God talks, watch me, you are not the only thing that heard it. Come on and help me get to my text. You're not the only thing that heard it. He wasn't whispering when he was talking to you. Do you realize that you are sitting in a sentence from God that's 4.5 billion years old? He talked to the sun one time and it's still obeying. He talked to the moon one time and it's still obeying. The waters ain't went nowhere. The mountains ain't went nowhere. The trees ain't went nowhere. The desert is still doing its job. The creeping beasts are still doing this. He said it once and they're still doing it. Now our thought is, when God says something to me, why does it seem like the opposite immediately happens? <laughs> I'm getting to my point, yeah. That's how you know God is talking. Because he'll talk and then the opposite will occur. You'll get a word and say you're about to be healed and you'll get a brand new doctor report that looks the opposite. You'll get a word about your child coming to God and being saved and then they get even more rebellious. As a matter of fact, the devil will send an agenda of lust because that's one of the easiest ways to pull people out of their destiny is through the ensnarement and the chemistry in their members. That's an easy way to tie you on up, send you to Delilah's hair shop, okay? So he'll send those agendas to you and you don't realize that the reason you're in what you in is because of the word. It's because of the word. Your war is determined by your word. Your fight is determined by your word. So now, before you appreciate what I've got to teach you, you've got to resolve right now, say yes, sir, that there is an angel relationship 
between resistance and revelation. In any area in your life where there is resistance, it's because of revelation. Once revelation comes, there are forces that operate to resist it, to pull you out of agreement with it. Why? In warfare, your words don't count. The devil don't care about your personality. You can't bind the devil with your words. It's the word of God that puts the powers of hell at bay. It's the word of God that stifles the hand of the enemy. And I want to know what you've been doing with your word. You lazy devil, you. You sat there and fell out and didn't get up and fight. You put it on your cell phone and that's the last time you heard it. But I believe God is stirring in this room prophetic words that you forgot about. Who in the Hades told y'all to put prophecies on the shelf? Do you know your money is on that shelf? Do you know your healing is on that dumb shelf? Just because you didn't understand it didn't mean that God didn't say it. And God always says stuff that's hard to understand. But you got to pull them words off. I'm not scared of you. Now I know, I know y'all. I know church people. Because when the word of the Lord comes, I'm not at my text. I'll take my time. When the word of the Lord comes, if it don't agree with your spirit. <laughs> if it don't bear witness with your spirit, you know, because we act like God's got to agree with us and we act like God's got to say stuff that we already know. And then this dumb stuff came out about prophecy only being about confirmation. <laughs> Tom foolery. How many of you know God will say stuff that you had no clue was going to happen? David did not know he was going to be king. As a matter of fact, he had no clue he was going to be king. Samuel didn't even know that David was going to be king. He was minding his own self business. But Samuel would have came to many of you in the middle of your career and in the middle of your program and in the middle of the city you ain't supposed to be living in and in the middle of dating that thing you ain't supposed to be dating. And he'll come and deliver the word of the Lord. And if it's not what you want, you'll try to bind it. But you can't bind up what God has already decided, baby. It don't have to agree with your spirit. It's going to happen anyway. Some stuff is just going to happen. You don't have to receive it. It will manifest. All prophecy, though, is not just predictor. Sometimes it's the wisdom of God, the access to the eternal streams of God's wisdom. Sometimes it's instructional. Sometimes it's warning. How do you know warnings are a part of the love of God? I'm not preaching yet. Warnings are a part of the love of God. Stay there. Warnings are a part of the love of God. And we have a generation that despises warning. We have a generation that does not like warning. We separate relationships because of warnings. We leave churches because of warnings. We get offended at preaching because of warning. But your problem is you're so steeped in your culture and you don't have enough of the Bible in you to know that warnings are God's ways to push you further, further, further. God is warning to protect the thing about you that you don't know is happening yet. Don't be scared of warnings. And then we got a fear of prophetic ministry and a fear of the word of the Lord. I'll get there when I want to because we've seen people be humiliated. Let me tell you something. If God were to mark iniquity, not nobody in here would be able to stand. I do not believe God's going to call you out through a prophetic voice and expose your sin. Oh yeah, Holy Ghost say you got a porn addiction. Now, I got about 20 people in here that want to hook up. Talk back to me because y'all know I'm a little freaky dink. I know what I'm talking about. You church people ain't confusing me. God is not trying to humiliate you. He's trying to heal you. And if he reveals it, he reveals it to heal it. He is not going to expose you to bank fraud and theft by calling out your bank account number in a service full of thieves. You got to stop being impressed with people that know your name. You know it yourself. You got to stop being infatuated with people who know your address. You know it yourself. God is not going to, the purpose of the prophetic is to secure you, not to expose you to danger. What if the person next to you is a thief, a criminal, a robber? You got to stop being impressed because it was specific and you got to fight with God because it's accurate. And sometimes it's specific and it ain't accurate. Ask me why. Because it did not come from the heart of God. And every move of God goes like this. He goes from his heart, from his mind, to his mouth, to his hand. I will repeat. I need a good class. This is how the word of the Lord works. From his heart, to his mind, to his mouth, to his hand. Again, from his heart, hallelujah, to his mind, glory to God, to his mouth, and then his hand. His hand is the last thing he sees. But when, your, when his hand is on it, it's because it's strong in his heart we prophesy backwards 
got to not just be his mind, it's got to be his heart. God's not going to give you a word of judgment for somebody you ain't cried for. You arrogant devil, you. He's not going to give you a revelation about somebody that you've got a personal opinion about anyway. God wants pure vessels. I, I'm talking about splinter lips, folk that kiss Calvary before they prophesy, folks that have a bloody revelation of what the word of the Lord does. There is a lot over you. But the process is this, from his heart to his mind to his mouth to his hand. And many of you are only living in the hand realm. What can you do for me? Where are you taking me? But you've got to retrace those steps, baby. Because if it seems like his hand ain't moving, it's because you misunderstood something in his heart. Are you following with me so far? So, so, so if there is a word over your life, just wave at me before, right now, real quick, if you have received a prophetic promise from God. Wave at me. Don't try to intimidate me. It will not work. Hand down. How many of you have never received a word from the Lord that's prophetic concerning your life? Be honest. You've never? Got it. I got you. Now, now if, if that is the case, you can open the word of God. Now, how many of you remember when you were immature in the things of the spirit? You say, God, if you want me to go to university of, of, of whatever, I'm going to open my Bible. And put, my, put my hand on whatever I land at. And then your fool self end up talking about, and El Shaddai begat, says Shaddai, says Shaddai. You're like, I don't know what. That ain't how it works. <laughs> that ain't how it works. So, so let's go to this thing, this, this thing in 1 Timothy. Hurry up. Hurry up. Paul met a young man in Acts chapter 16 in Lystra, and he met this young man who was being groomed by uh, his mother and his grandmother. His name was Timothy, Timotheus. And uh, when he started to get a hold of Timothy, we know only about his father, that his father was a Greek, and so he was a mixed boy. And so his grandmother and mother entrusted Timothy to Paul. This is an, an apostolic relationship where he becomes his protege, his companion, his, his son, as it were. And he became his son because Paul had to circumcise him, say yes. And after that, there were three central areas, stay with me, it will matter in a minute, that Paul began to deal with him about. He first de started dealing with him about a cuss word called character his 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 demeanor come on don't get uncomfortable don't cringe at character he started chiseling away at the unnecessary the unsuitable the personality traits that were on his life that were a, a byproduct of his pubescence and his immaturity you know there are things about you that are not necessarily wrong they're just unnecessary and depending upon where you're going you got to deal with your preferentials uh, you don't have to respond that way and you don't have to have a demon in your neck all the time and you don't have to have resting something face <laughs> all the time you, 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 you don't have to roll your eyes and you don't have to speak with certain forces and all of that stuff you know a lot of that stuff is trauma anyway baby we know you broken it's okay that's not an attitude that's a daddy won't clap your hands now for real sight I'm not scared of you so he pulls this man now and he starts walking with him he deals with his character he deals with his character Timothy be on time uh, Timothy starts studying more Timothy what are you reading Timothy be the same person in work as you are in church. Don't switch up on it. Get your character right. Timothy, do this. Do this. So he deals with his character. Say yes. Then he starts dealing with another thing, which is his content. What are you talking about? Is that really in the Bible? Is that a saying you got from the culture? What's in your mouth? I want your content to be right. I want you to know your doctrine because a lot of us are doing things that we can't explain. You can't teach it. And I don't think you should demonstrate it if you can't explain it. We need doctrinal mentoring and doctrinal shaping. And so he deals with Timothy about his content. And then ultimately he deals with him about his calling. So we got what? His character. Then we got his what? His content. And then we got his calling. Now, Paul developed or, or got word of something because church people talk. Can we say that together? Church people talk. Don't be scared. Say it again. Church people talk. Okay. Now, Paul got word that church people were talking. You know, the green room gang bangers. The home row key thugs. The text message terrorists. 
<laughs> yeah. He got word that something was going on in Ephesus where in his absence, there were leaders that were amassing influence. Say with me. They were not some of the original people, but they were in the congregation, and they started getting influence, and they started misconstruing the message of Jesus and how to follow him. Paul heard of it. and was like, wait a minute. There are people in this church that are teaching this thing wrong. They're in there discipling people unto themselves. They're distracting them from the message of the cross. And let, me, let me do something. Let me send somebody I've worked on. My God. Let, let, let me send a representative that I can trust, that can secure this thing and authenticate this thing and validate this thing and correct it. So now he takes Timothy and he sends them in the mess at Ephesus. He sends them in this world of hostility where you've got leaders competing for attention and fighting for value and fighting for stage and microphone and platform and voice and shares and likes and followers and comments and shields and checks and cash apps and all that stuff. So he sends them in here. If you were Timothy, that's not a very welcoming place for you to be. You, you, you're sending me into a place that's disturbed, that's unsettled, that's not accommodating. But can I give you some news? Wherever God sends you on assignment, it will always accommodate you. I wish I had the time. You got to stop using comfort as your confirmation. Help me. Yeah, just because it looks like it's set up for you. Just because it looks like you got the red carpet. Do you know God promised Israel land that was already occupied with stuff there? It belonged to them by promise but not by possession. It took the power of the prophetic word to deal with what was living in your stuff. So Timothy goes to clarify the mess. He goes and he's standing on the behalf of Paul. Do you understand that he's confronting them in that now? The apostle Paul, this is going to make sense. He's got some real unique revelations, Dr. Pierre. If you read the epistles of Paul, he's always talking about war. He, he's got a war revelation. He, he's got a war revelation. And I know you Christians like Zen. <sighs> logic if there's not there's there's no spirits anywhere a naive generation and one of the devil's greatest deceptions is getting you to believe he's not there Paul had a revelation of war. He had a revelation of war. He had a revelation of weaponry. Write these down. It's going to matter to you in a minute. A revelation of war. A revelation of weaponry. He had a revelation of armor. Mm. He had a revelation of wrestling. He's, Paul gave us, we what? Wrestle not against flesh and blood. Paul gave us, put on the whole armor of God. If this is not a battle, why do you need armor? He prophesied this whole Christian institution into a life of war and warfare. He talks about weaponry and war. The weapons, plural. Say plural. Say plural. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Now, I'm a nerd. I am. A bit of an intellectual ghetto person. I enjoy urban scholarship. The S, the S, mess with me. The weapons got stuck at the S, Rachel. Because from what I understand, there's only about one or two. But weapons implies that there are more than one weapon that you can use. And, 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 and I can't help but wonder how many of us are worshiping weaponless. Living weaponless. Or we have access to weapons that we don't know how to use or that we refuse to use, say, weapons. Your destiny will require the right use of your weapons. Your happiness will require the right use of your weapons. Your future will require the right handle on your weapons. You can have a weapon before you and not know how to handle, uh, uh, appropriately handle it and not see results in your life because of your relationship with your weapons. Many of you are estranged from your weaponry. You have a long distance, a platonic relationship with your weaponry. But if you have a word, you've got a weapon. If you've got a word, you've got a weapon. If you've got a word, you've got a weapon. Now the Lord's job is to bring his word to pass. Your job is to align yourself with it. What did you say to Timothy in this mess? Verse 18, 1 Timothy 1 is real simple. But if you get it, you'll change forever. Timothy, 
This is in the New Living Translation. My son, here are my instructions for you. All right? Based on the prophetic words. Now, I told you the climate that Timothy is in. The situation that Timothy is in, the environment that Timothy is in, the atmosphere, the, 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 the assignment, the, the, the situation that Timothy is in. And Paul tells Timothy, based on the prophetic words spoken about you earlier, may they help you fight well in the Lord's battles. Cling to your faith in Christ and keep your conscience clear for some people have deliberately violated their consciousness. As a result, their faith has been shipwrecked. You got to fight for it. You've got to fight for it. Not the mayor come up in here and apostolically set up my message like that. You've got to fight for it. And I don't understand why you want something you don't have to fight for. Now, I understand why this amen is scary coming out of you because you got battle fatigue. And that's what the devil does. If he can't kill you, he'll exhaust you. He'll tire you out. He'll make you feel like you're in a permanent cycle, waiting on nothing and not seeing no sign and not seeing no symptom. So you just stand there and do nothing. But Paul said, you have got to use those prophetic words before you. You've got to use them prophetic words before you to keep your faith alive. Here are the possibilities now. Paul could have been telling Timothy, watch now, based on the prophetic words, watch this real quick, there's going to come a distraction. Say, fight for it. Say, fight for it. There's going to come a distraction. If God declares something over you, you will be tested with distraction. He was telling Timothy, don't get distracted. God said something about you. You've got to understand the power and the science and the technology of demonic distractions. And things that are distractions never look like distractions. You, you, you can't live your life acting like you're going to always know when you're distracted. Honey, by the time you realize you're distracted, you've been off focus a long time ago. Let me tell you what a snare is. A snare is a mechanism that's made of steel that's hidden in grass in dark places so that when a large animal walks in and around it or by it, it clamps at their ankles to make them bleed out and immobilize them. This is why certain relationships can be a snare. Certain conversations can be a snare. Certain friendships can be a snare. I know you're not going to like this, but we hear certain desires can snare you. I can't tell you how many people mad at God won't come to church deconstructing their faith because they were believing for something that just didn't happen and now their frustration has become a snare now their, 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 their bad teaching or their bad experience with one person in a house has become a snare unto them so when God talks to you around you about you about your destiny watch for the distraction because what the devil wants you to do is take your eyes off the word of the Lord he wants you to stop studying it and stop do you understand that there are prophetic words that you have that may manifest over a period of decades it's not going to always happen you're talking about a God that don't talk seconds and minutes you're talking about a God outside of eternity so as he talks he's talking outside of time into time and time submits to what he said eternally and so because of that you can't be mad at God because you are impatient and you can't be frustrated with God because you think if he don't do it this year or next month that he lied because a prophet said soon it's going to be expedient but he got it from a God that's incorporeal that's in this so soon to God could be 30 years. Soon to God could be your, but, but here's the deal. Because we pulled that word and we raped it and we pulled it out of the realm of its content and we settled it in our heart and we fell in love with the promise. But they want to embrace the process. When you receive a prophetic word, you are immediately enrolling into a process. When a prophetic word comes in your life, it may answer some things. It may prognosticate some things. It may highlight some things. But what it is going to do for sure is give you the opportunity to enroll in a process. What is it going to take to birth this word out? What is it going to take to birth this word out? Do you know that the first responsibility of the prophets was Jesus? This is why I don't trust prophets that don't say his name. Anyway, <laughs> the first responsibility of the prophets was Jesus. They prophesied, and it took work to get him down out of 42 generations. How? 
did that happen people were prophesying him behold your king comes behold your Isaiah prophesied him Enoch even prophesied him Daniel prophesied him they prophesied him now God could have just sent the Messiah on earth without prophetic words but here if there were not prophetic words that predated the Messiah's arrival then people wouldn't know what to do when they came but they prophesied him he's coming he's coming he's coming he's coming and those prophetic words were coming through barriers of sociological and anthropological challenges and walls and idioms and issues and ideals that would have restricted him in that way so there are prophetic words that go on over your life and it's got to work through stuff okay you don't hear me this prophetic promise has got to come through your father's iniquity this prophetic promise has got to come through the covenants you made with the Ouija board this prophetic promises has got to come through that island witchcraft and it's got to come through false teaching and it's got to come through heart vows and heart altars mm, stay there I'm talking about distractions there's a story Andre in the book of Ezekiel where the Bible says that they would come to the prophet of God for an answer and the Bible said that God got so fed up with the position of their heart that, 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 that when they got to Ezekiel God told Ezekiel I tell you one thing go ahead and tell them everything that's in their heart you got to be careful because sometimes you know the word for psychic is in the Greek is suke it means a soul reader some folk not talking for God they just tapping into what's going on in your soul if this is the only thing that's in your soul anybody can see what's in the soul it don't take the spirit to see what's in the soul all you got to do is be an empath all you got to do is be sensitive I can tell you sad over something just by looking at you you ain't got to have a word from the Lord but there's a difference between what's in the soul and what God is saying and you are moving into a season where you can't fight with the word from the soul you got to contend from what came out of the mouth of God open your mouth and yell distraction Yay! open your mouth and say distraction I prophesy that this is going to be your wisest season that you're not going to waste your years being distracted no more you're coming out of your hobbies into your purpose you're coming out of your fantasies into your future you're coming out of competition with your counterparts into your holy calling and it will be done by the wisdom of God come on say I won't be distracted open your mouth say I feel warfare say I won't be distracted Say, I won't be distracted. We bind the power of the decoy. We bind the power of the counterfeit. We bind and break the power of the broken eye, of the wandering eye, of the roaming eye. So when the word of the Lord comes, he said, Timothy, fight with those words. They're going to set you up. They're going to make conspiracies about you. You won't be do nothing about it, but pull on the word of the Lord. you got to go back and get a hold of that cell phone and say, what was said to me in prayer? Some of you need to repent to your journals. you got words in there from years that you ain't done nothing with. This ain't no poem. This is the word of the Lord. That's not just there for you to reflect on. Baby, you got to grab a hold of that thing and fight for your life. There's going to come a season when you're not going to believe nothing around you no sign no symptom but if there is a word and if we're going to believe that God is God like the snow like the snow like the snow you came out of heaven you got to land here and do what you're going to do but you got to guard yourself from distraction let me just put a caveat here it's too late in the game to not have discernment I'm talking about real discernment I'm not talking about squinting and seeing gorillas I'm not talking about squinting and seeing bats I'm talking about real discernment and you can't tell me you got discernment if you don't have your Bible the, the discernment is scripture based it's not a gut feeling it's not intuition it's not, I know a liar. If that's the only thing you use your discernment for, you're weak. You're juvenile. That's not the full gambit of the gift of discerning of spirits. You got to see the motivating entity behind an action, thought, idea, goal, plan, or statement. You got to be able to know what's behind the place. Come on, life is a theater. Can I preach like I want to? Life is a theater. If you get distracted by the actors, come on here, and you get distracted by the people that's on the screen, you're going to miss what's behind the scenes. It's the executive producer producer you need. You're not hearing me. When you look at TV and you get infatuated by the people that are there, the obvious stuff, those are not the real power brokers. Can I use a warfare term? You need to be worried about the strong man. You worried about the little mini devils. You worried about church offense and church gossip, but you got to hear, have the puppeteer. You need to know what's controlling it, what's after it. It's easy to attack the obvious. 
it's difficult to decode that that is hidden in the background. You need this. Yeah, come on. Let's do it real quick. This is going to be bizarre. Let's act like some crazy Pentecostals, y'all. The mayor is gone. Put your hand on your neighbor's shoulder real quick. Come on, let's do it. In the name of Jesus, I declare a discerning heart. A discerning Yeah, I declare that your decision making is going to be covered with discernment. That your business dealings are going to be covered with discernment. That you're going to be able to discern the good and the bad. You're going to discern it. You will have eyes that see. You will have ears that hear. You will have burdens. You will have the Masa of God. The weight of God will come upon you. When a decision is wrong, you won't have peace. God will touch your pillow. You will be disturbed in the night. And that will be your discernment. You will discern the trap. You will discern the scheme. You will discern the plot. You will discern the plan. You will discern the ploy. You will discern the lie. You will discern the truth. You will discern it. Hey, you will discern it. You will discern it. Let this be a discerning people. Come on, let's go. We release the seven spirits of God in this place. The spirit of wisdom and revelation, knowledge and the fear of the Lord, judgment and burning in here. You will discern it. I declare that the seeing eye and the hearing ear, the Lord hath given both unto you. We will no longer grope in the dark, but we will see it. Hey, we will see it. Hey, we will see it. No more distractions. Hallelujah. No more distractions. No more distractions. The devil loves distractions, but I got a prophetic word and I've got to fight for it. Come on. Let's go to the next one. Now, after you receive a word from the Lord, not only do you have to watch for the distraction, you've got to watch for the deception. The deception. The deception. Something that appears to be what it is not. Deception. Here is the rule, the revelatory rule about deception. Take a deep breath. I'm teaching you good. Listen, deception is a drip feeder. Nobody wakes up deceived. What happens is it drips in you one word at a time, one emotion at a time. Some of you know the voice of your feelings more than the voice of your father, and that's how you end up deceived. You got to realize that your feelings don't know your future. And if you sit at home and how you feel, you're going to miss out on what God is saying concerning your next. Not only will I have discernment, oh God, and not only will I not be distracted, I won't be deceived. I'm not going to be deceived. Well, how can you prevent your heart from deception? Great question, sugar. <laughs> the Lord will give me the desires of my heart as long as I delight myself in him. I just gave you the key to guarding your life from deception. You got to learn to be happy in him. You, whew, you got to learn to want what he wants. You got to learn to want what he wants when he wants it. You got to learn to what what he wants when he wants it, how he wants to do it. You got to love it. And the real problem is people end up in deception because the real truth is that they don't want what he wants. They have preferences on God's promises. They want him to do it this way uh, with this people uh, in this place uh, without this process. But how many of you can say right now, I want what he wants. I'm not going to get trapped up there. I know it's hard for you to get that out your mouth you stubborn thing you but God is looking for people that will say I really do want what he wants I tried to do it my way tried to have it my way but God if this is what you want I want it too God if this is what you want I want it too and if I don't want it I got a weapon that I can use remember the weapons were plural what do you do doctor when I don't really want what he wants you lift your hands and you worship him you see worship is one of your weapons and what part of what worship does is help you want what he wants this is why we need better songs in the church. There is a generation struggling to want what he wants. There are families struggling to want what he wants. You can't get up singing no Dr. Seuss and expect deliverance to come to the people. Oh God, I'm singing until the soul is submitted. Singing until the psychological self is bowed down before him. So when I don't want what he wants, I worship. Praise is easy. Because any inanimate object can do it. But worship is about the complete yielding and the complete surrendering of everything around you. I really do want what you want. I don't know how it's going to make me feel, but I want it. I don't know what is going to happen in my life, but I want it. I want your will for real. 
That's how you get saved from deception. Fight with it, Timothy. I said something over you, and what the devil is going to do in this assignment is distract you because he wants to ultimately deceive you. Watch me. Are you ready for this? Are you ready for this? If you ain't ready, I don't care. I'm going to say it anyway. The next thing you got to watch for, listen, I'm a prophet. I know what I'm talking about. Depression. God of glory. The enemy wants the word of the Lord to depress you. The Bible say the, the, the point of God talking and prophecy over you is edification, exhortation, and comfort. But what happens when something is said that becomes a weapon against you? Mm -hmm. Depress. Well, how can the word of the Lord come and how can the devil depress me? Very easily. Hope deferred. 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 Hope deferred makes the heart sick. And the key to curing any cancer is early detection. You don't put your hope in how it's going to happen. You put your hope in who said it. And the problem is a lot of our hope got lost. Come on in the work now. Because we put our hope in the aftermath and in the byproduct and in the manifestation. But you got a hope in who said it. Because there will come a time where you won't believe what he said. And when you are in a battle over what he said, you've got to encourage yourself on who he is. I'm trying to talk to you as an intercessor. Charles, when I get frustrated about what he said, I go to the names of God. I'll teach you later. You don't want it right now. When I believe he lied to me, I'm like, okay, you are El Roy, the all-seeing God. You are Jehovah Yira, and you will always see to it. I start reminding him myself of his names. And not that he needs to hear it and watch me, but his business card gives me the breakthroughs that I need. I know what you did for Abram, and I know know what you did for Moses. I know what you did for Daniel. I know what you did for Paul. I know what you did for Silas. I know what you did for Shadrach. I know what you did for Meshach. I know what you did. And because I don't believe what you're saying, I'm going to call out who you are. You've always been a healer. You've always been a deliverer. You've always been a sustainer. You've always been a regulator. You've been my psychologist. You've been my lawyer. You've been my advocate in the face of my adversary. You poured fresh oil upon my head in the middle of the battle. I don't know what you're saying, but I so know who you are. I want somebody in here real quick. Shout because he is who he is. Hey, shout because he is who he is. I'm getting lost. Shout because he is who he is. I don't know what he's saying, but I know who he is. I know who he is. I know who he is. I know it who he is. I know who he is. Hey, bless you. I'm going by myself. Paul said, I know in whom I believe. And when you're confused over what he said, pour yourself into who he is. I will not allow God's promises to become the premise of my depression. Mm -mm. I will not allow God's promise to become the premise of my depression. It will not depress me. I will not be like Hannah who heard the word of the Lord concerning a son. And I wept bitterly because Penina was mocking me. If you have a prophetic word over your life, you will have prophetic advocates and prophetic adversaries. Repeat it. You will have prophetic advocates. This is why your intercessors... Oh, I feel revival. This is why your intercessors are important. When your intercessors are stationed around the word of the Lord. So the word of the Lord over your life is the map for your intercessors. It's their instruction. We pray the word of God over you. The word of the Lord over you. Now, your intercessors help you to stop focusing on Penina. Because Penina is petty. That heifer's going to mock you every time she get. But you need an intercessor. Ask me why. In the realm of the spirit, your intercessors have more authority than your haters. I'm going to tell you where you got trapped at. Uh, everybody gets frustrated with what they're saying uh, when you don't know what he said. Uh, everybody gets frustrated with what they're doing uh, when you don't know what he's already did. Uh, your real warfare is not them. Uh, it's really pulling your soul to hear and believe him. Next one. When the word of the Lord comes, you ready? Can you handle a little more? You've got to be warned about a detour. The word of the Lord may come to you saying, do this, and you will search for a convenient way to get there. 
a journey that should take a couple days is going to be elongated because of your murmuring. Oh, God, I'm going to do a whole series called Shut Up. Murmuring gets in the way of movement. When you murmur and you complain, you cannot move. Your movement is determined by the level of murmuring you got going on. When things are slow, people are probably talking. Things not moving. Murmuring can cost momentum. Talk back to me. Murmuring and complaining gets in the way because it convolutes and it, it, it makes what God said uh, uh, ambiguous. It's hard to make it out when you got everybody murmuring around you. Now, when you're dealing with the detour option, what the devil will try to do, job, listen to me. It will get you or try to make you feel like you can get what God said without doing it God's way. Hallelujah. Everything Satan said to Jesus in Matthew 4 was true. If you do this, I'll give you the kings of the world. Well, he was promised that. Isn't it written that if you turn this thing to bread? And he tempted him with what was really for him. I'm, I'm talking to you and you don't want to hear it. He tempted him with what God really wanted for him. How can the devil tempt you with what God wants for you by taking process out of it? He basically said, you can get this fast, Dad. You, you can get this without crying. You can get this without waiting. Everything. Listen, listen. How did he get at him? 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 He told Adam, hey, disobey because God knows that if you do this, you're going to be like him. Problem was, whole time he was already made like him. But what he tried to do was subtract the process. Israel died in the wilderness. 40 years and a generation dies. Jesus comes. Let me tell you about the power of obedience. This is how the prophetic word works. How do you position yourself? Set yourself to obey. Why? Israel spends 40 years in the wilderness. A whole generation dies. Jesus comes and he's found in the same place Israel died, the wilderness. He didn't go to the church first. Israel had unfinished business. I wish I had help here. And so the Messiah came to complete what Israel lost. He shows up in the very same place of Israel's defeat. He shows up there, and how many days does he spend in the wilderness? Huh? He spent one day for every year that Israel lost. Obedience has the power to make you have in a day what could have cost you a year. Oh, you don't hear me now. Obedience can reverse what costs you a year to do. If you will go with me in faith, I declare over you that what used to cost you 12 months, what used to take a year to accomplish a year to achieve God's about to do it in a day shall a nation be born in a day but as soon as Zion travail she brought forth her child he will do it in a day he will do it in a what is that oh yeah I prophesied that one day it's going to turn all you need is the right day all you need is the right day all you need and you've had enough bad days you've had enough broke days you've had enough sad days God's about to send better days to you He's going to deliver you uh, from fear of days. Uh, your devotion is rising. Uh, your worship is rising. Uh, your study is rising. Your counsel is rising. Your wisdom is rising. In a day, any day now, any day now, if you feel like you're running out of time, let the miracle of just will be upon you. Sun stand still. I want my day. Sun stand still. I want my day. Pause it. The final one, the goal. You receive the word of the Lord. It comes on your life. You contend for it because the ultimate goal of all of this is to disarm you. Drop your weapon. Disarm you. It's not just about the depression. It's about dropping the weapon. It's not just about the, 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 the anxiety. It's about dropping the weapon. Now, how do I know if I drop my weapon if you've ignored your prophetic words? They're just there now. I'm talking to you, and I hope you're convicted. You're just sitting there looking at it. Oh, yeah, I got a word when I was two that I would go and be on the stages around the world. Well, what the heck are you doing now? You're waiting on God like he's an event planner? Like he's just supposed to make it happen, and he's your genie in a bottle. Rub him a couple of times, and here he comes. 
come to church one fast, too slow, take the offering, and away we go. That's not how you receive the word of the Lord. Posture yourself. If he told you you would rule among the heathen, you got to learn what the heathen does without becoming one. And the reason why many of you ain't been released into it is because you can still be converted. God will allow you to be delivered for the level of darkness you're supposed to be around. You will be sanctified for the level of insanity you will be around. God don't want to send you around lunatics for you to become one of them. So he's got to allow you to live in such a way where he kills the common ground in you before he sends you into darkness. That's how you can rule among the heathen. You ain't one of them. Drop your weapon. Timothy, you're in a situation, a circumstance, an environment, an atmosphere, an assignment, a delegated responsibility, a duty. But what you're going to have to encourage you is the prophetic word. So apparently, Timothy spent time receiving prophetic ministry. He had to. There had to be predictions about who he would be. Uh, every major move in the Bible was prophesied. Every purpose in the Bible was prophesied. The Bible said in Hebrews that the worlds were framed by the words of his mouth. There are things that have not happened because somebody ain't prophesied it. That something has not come out of the realm of God's mind and God's heart into the world. Stop complaining about your kids and prophesy. What kind of parent doesn't prophesy? You don't have to be a prophet. You're the guardian of that destiny. And something's got to come out of your mouth that's stronger than the decree of the devil over you. You need to stir yourself up or stop having sex. Come on, let's go. If you're not ready to speak for God, keep your parts to yourself. I said that. You lucky I ain't in office. Because I put a tax on fornication. And every major bill in this world will be paid for. I sure would. Husbands should prophesy. Wives should prophesy. Friends should prophesy. And I'm not talking about out of the, the abundance of the heart. I'm talking about the heart of God, the mind of God. So this whole concept of fighting for it is pulling you for the next several months out of passivity concerning God's prophetic word to you. you got to do more than hear it. You've got to wage war with it according to this war, according to the prophecies that went on before you. Wage war with it. Wage war with it. What does it look like? I'm not just talking about looking at the prophecies and saying, God, you said in your word that you was going to do it. No, you do positional warfare. Align your character with that word. Don't wait till you're elected to start dealing with your diplomacy skill. Go to school for what God said. Study what God said. Get around people who are doing what you're about to do. No soldier trains at home. You must be baptized and immersed in the environment of your future. The problem is you're calling your future while you're comfortable in your past. You must go into training in the world of what God said to you. This is why the prophetic word is absolutely important because the devil hates it. God's got promises over you. He can't stand the fact that he's got promises over you. Hezekiah! You about to die. Call State Farm, buddy. Get your will intact or else they're about to be raising GoFundMes for you. Get it together. Go ahead and end it. This guy's a cool. The prophet of God turns around, gets to the door. The hand of the Lord comes on him. Huh. I don't know what you just said to God. I don't know what you just committed to God, but your life will be extended. Hezekiah's commitment to God's prophetic purpose for him extended his days. Some people die prematurely because they don't want to do what God wants them to do. You can agree with death. And when you are in rebellion, there's only one other place to go. Death is rebellion matured. The Bible said the way of a transgressor is hard. God is not Barney. He will make stuff hard if it gets your attention. And if you won't hear it from his mouth, you'll hear it from life. <laughs> you'll hear it from life. Now, what do I do if I've ended up in a dangerous place? And, 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 and some of you are in this place right now. You live there. You built a home there. You, you've got an Airbnb in a place called Disappointment. Because you think God is like your natural father. So you're used to having promises broken to you. So you don't, uh-oh. 
You don't like tapping into the realm of promise keeping and promise making because you'd rather brace yourself so that you're not disappointed. So I wrote a whole book on it, same as Quill. <laughs> but God said, God, I am not, he said, I am not a man. Why does God need to remind us that he's not a man? Because he doesn't want you to hear him through the lens of your disappointment. Because I'm not a man, I don't have it in you to disappoint me. I can't, I can't disappoint you. I'm God. My plan is perfect. My way is perfect. My timing is perfect. And if we're in disagreement about what I said, you've got to trust that I'm a perfect God. No word will come to pass if you don't believe God can do it. So the name of this is Fight for It. Don't strive, fight. There is a difference. Keep the word of the Lord as a center in your life. I have these parameters, these limitations, these allowances because of what God said and is saying about me. Now, the quicker you come into alignment with God. Come here, real hard. I need more body. Turtleneck, come here, man. somebody to play the devil. No, you can't do that. There's, I need an active, somebody be the devil. I know you, you real saved. That's Bryce, Bryce, come here. Not Brown. You very saved. I love it. I love the kind, I do love the kind of saved you are. Come here. <laughs> now, I want to just set this up visually for you. He's saved. Come here, man. I mean, he's sanctified, too. Tell you, he quickened. You understand me? I love him for it. Jesus is the visual aid of God. Say that together. Jesus is the visual. Say it again. God knows that we are visual learners. So he sends us Jesus as his visual aid. The disciples say, show me the Father. Jesus like, if you've seen me, you've seen the Father. All right, let's Walt Disney this so you can appreciate it. I'm going to make you the devil, just because you got on a red hat. We, we know you can. Hi, John the Baptist. How are you, sir? Nice little uh, camel's hair and locusts. You need anything for today's service? I'm your armor bearer, okay? All right. Come here, Jesus. You got the long hair. Walk slow. You got to be deep, man. All right. That's it. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. That takes away the sin of the world. That takes away the sin of the world. Now go up there. Okay, baptize him. Thank you, Mr. John. Okay. I'm the dove. Now, I need God. Come here, TJ. Turn him around. Back up, devil. Back up real far. Tur I mean, grab him. Now, don't swing on him. This is acting. Grab him tight by the shoulders. Brutally turn him around. Okay. I'll get behind him now. Don't fall. I got money. If you fall, I'll, I'll pay you. Push him. Closer to the devil. Closer to the devil. Closer to the devil. Now, leave him there, God. Leave him. Leave him there. Now freeze. At the baptism service, John, didn't we all hear God say something? This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. That's my James Earl Jones right now. <laughs> if you be the son of God, if you be the son of God, if you be the son of God. <laughs> the premise of the devil's attack, the basis of the devil's statement, the background and the logic behind what he said was the last thing God said. God said, this is my son. I'm well pleased in him. 
but he got pushed to face the devil not to test who he was but to test what God said your last attack God I wish your last attack is based on heaven's last sentence look at the last thing you just went through I promise you God said something first and if God said something first it's stronger than what the devil is doing now thank you You're not under attack for no reason. You're not getting backlash for no reason. The whole premise of this brigade, the whole premise of this conspiracy, the whole premise of this setup is that God said something and more than one thing heard it. If I had the time, Corey, I'd teach you about prophetic theft. (laughs) Prophetic hijacking. I watch my word. Why does God have to watch his word? Because it can be abducted. It can be snatched. There are other entities that want what God said about you. Okay. Amen. Your homework is, don't just get excited. I do want to dance. I'll find a reason in a minute. But your homework, not just this week, but from now until the end of the year, start remember, and don't let it depress you. Don't let it discourage you. Don't let it torment you. I I want you to go back maybe five to eight years. What are some things God said about you? You got them written down? Did your grandmama prophesy it? Well, did it come in a meeting, at a conference or something? Did it come in your devotional time? And look at it. And I guarantee you, you will find out that more has happened than what you realize. You, <laughs> all right, Corey, here's the shouting cue. Watch me. You are sitting in a season that you used to pray would come. Mm-mm, you don't believe me. Now, it's not ideal. You don't have everything you want. Some stuff may not have come to pass, but I guarantee you 10 years ago, you never would imagine you would be here making this type of money with this type of resource, with this type of access. No, you don't have everything you want, but these are the days you used to cry about. Hey, hey, hey. These are the days you used to dance about. Stop lying. You were at a conference about 10 years ago, believing God to bring you to the day you're sitting in now. Now, just a Imagine what another 10 years is going to do. Imagine what another 20, all he needs is a little more time. You will see the hand of the Lord God bring his word to pass. You may not be as free as you want to be, but you're showing a slave to that no more. You may need deliverance from this, but you don't battle with that again. You may call yourself this. You may have an occasional battle with that. But you are not who you used to be. It's called prophetic progress. He's been bringing his word to pass every day. You declare these days. You prophesied these days. You fasted over these days. Oh, yes, you did. You gave God praise for these days. There were preachers in revival that said, praise God if you believe God to save your children. And at the time, they were acting like knuckleheads. And right now, they may not be where you want them to be, but God didn't touch their mind. He gave them a good job. What I'm trying to tell you is you're wasting time in worry. Worry is one of the weapons of the devil to pull you out of agreement with what God said. So you got to remember he's always brought his word to pass. I can prove that. Lift your hands if you are alive. I said, lift your hands if you're alive. Lift your hands if you're alive. Now, if you're happy and you know it, clap your hands. What I'm trying to tell you is God is not done. God is not done. God is not great men and women. I only born for the time that they are needed the most. And the only reason you're still here is because God is not finished. If this were everything that life had to offer, 
you'd have a reason to quit. But because God is not finished, you've got to press harder and see what to do not drop your weapons. 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 That career is not dead, it's asleep. Don't drop your weapons. It's not stuck, it's growing. Don't drop your weapons. God did not lie, he's taking his time. Don't drop your weapons. You are the clay, he is the potter, and you've been on the wheel, spinning, rising, falling, growing, being groomed, but it's going to happen. If God be God, it's got to happen. It's got to happen. It's got to happen. Oh, I want to hear the praise of somebody that refuses to take their word to the tomb. I can hear you. That refuses to take that promise to the grave. Shut your mouth, devil. You ain't getting my word. You're not taking my promise. I'm going to live this word out. Every one of them. Well, bless his name. I am not a man that I should lie. Neither am I the son of man. I should change my mind. I said it. I will perform it. And if I spoke it, I will make it good. Now, I know this is simple. And it's not deep enough for a lot of you. But you could save years and tears. If you just got desperate enough to wrestle with what God said and incline your ear, I'm going to tell you a secret of a mature praiser. After we're done running, shopping, and dancing, we're listening. That's what makes the praise mature. I'm going to dance until I find a new reason to obey, a new reason to yield, a new reason to subject my desire and my will to you. It will come to pass. All right, fight with it. Fight for it. Don't let the devil tease you with it. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah, I see this. All right, just take a minute real quick by yourself. It's not serendipity or an epiphany. But just remember a couple of things the Lord promised about you. Destiny words. Things you went to bed dreaming over and over again that you know wasn't your idea. Promises. Promises. Glory. Promises. 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 Come on, grab a hold of it in your mind. Yeah. From his heart to his mind to his mouth to his hand. To his hand. To his hand. We will remember. We will remember. Surely the Lord God doeth nothing in the earth. Except he reveal it. Except he reveal it. Except he reveal it. All right. I'm going to say this and we're going to go up in praise. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has it entered into the heart of men. The thing that God hath prepared for those that love him. We stop there. But here's a shout. But God hath revealed it. Whoa, come on, I want you to shout because the lights are getting ready to come on. Come on right here. Hey, that was stupid. I said shout because the lights are coming on right here. Come on. Come on. Y'all ain't desperate enough. Come on. How dare you give a fortune cookie more confidence than the mouth of God? How dare you give your zodiac more volume in the microphone of your life? God said it. Hey. God said it. Yeah. God said it. That's what I want. God said it. God said it. God said it. Hey, hey, hey. God said it. Come on. Encourage your heart. God said it. Hey, hey. God said it. God said it. God said it. I don't care what the calendar says. God said it. Medicine can say what it wants. God said it. I don't care what science is screaming at me. God said it. God said it. Oh, I see some faith coming alive. I see faith coming alive. I see some faith coming alive. I see some faith coming alive. I see some faith coming alive. I see faith, 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 faith. By faith, by faith. 
By faith. Oh yeah, you give it up there. By faith. Come on, I'm one with my weapon. This word is in my mouth. I'm one with my weapon. I refuse to forget what the Lord promised me. scream I believe God I ain't got no I said throw your hands up and say I believe God say I believe God say I believe God say I believe God open your mouth this is spiritual warfare I believe God I believe God I believe 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 he that come into God Come to God, must believe that He is, and He is a rewarder of them that diligently. Oh, yes, I believe. Oh, yes, I believe. Come on, stop pouting. Stop pouting. Stop pouting. Stop groaning. Stop complaining. Believe Him. It's better to believe Him. If I don't believe Him, I'm going to go crazy. It's much better to believe him. If I don't believe him, I'm going to lose my mind. I believe God. Glory. Lift your hands. Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. I sense, I sense a strong release of faith in the room. I said, I, I sense faith in the room. And if I said, if I said money or new cars, you would respond differently. But a lot of your faith needs to be revived. I said, your faith needs to be revived. I said, hey, your faith needs to be revived. Faith cometh by hearing. Faith cometh by hearing. If you can hear it, you can have it. I said, faith cometh by hearing. Now, in the name of Jesus, wherever your level of faith was before you walked into 1515, I declare a graduation in your faith today that the devil is not going to weak. I feel God's strength now. He is not going to weaken your faith level. You will have faith. Hey, hey, by faith. By faith. By faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. How you gonna do it? By faith. How you gonna be it? By faith. How you gonna walk in it? By faith. How you gonna know what to say? By faith. By faith. I'm not walking according to my sight. For it is written. I'm about to run off this stage. It is written. It is written that the just. Hey, ho. That the just, they live by faith. This is a lifestyle for me. I'm not just believing God for one season, but for the rest of my life, I'll be believing Him. Glory. Hey, glory. Hey, glory. Hey, glory. Go, glory. I feel something dropping like rain. Glory to God. I'm about to get wild in a minute. Glory to God. Come on, faith arise. Faith arise. Will you grab somebody real quick? Put them in your arms. Come on, put them in your arms. Hold them. And command their faith. Come on, say believe God. Come on, by faith. Come on, by faith. Hold them until faith comes back. It's been hard. It's been rough. Do what I said. Hug them now. Come on, God's going to bring it to pass. God's going to bring it to pass. Come on, hold them. Come on. Come on, by faith, by faith, by faith, by faith. I don't know why I'm here, but by faith, healing by faith, deliverance by faith, opportunity by faith, access by faith, power by faith, hey, authority by faith, wealth by faith. Where is this money? Where is this money? Where is this money? Where is this money? Where is this money, is this money? by faith? By faith. I don't need to fund it. I've got the faith for it. I've got the faith for it. I've got the faith for it. Woo. 
Oh, I did somebody go crazy for the thing you've got the faith for. <laughs> go crazy for the thing you've got the faith for. Woman, your faith has made you well. Son, your faith has made you well. Oh, we don't shout over faith no more. Oh, yeah. Sometimes faith will make you look like a fool. But I'm willing to be mocked for it. Willing to be laughed at for it. I've got the faith. I've got the faith. I see it back there. I've got the faith. I've got the faith. I spent too much time in fear. I've got the faith for it. I've got the faith for it. I've got the faith for it. The faith for it. I don't know why ain't nobody running yet. I still got a word. Hallelujah. I still got a word. I'm alive because it ain't happened yet. I still got a word. Hey! My soul of Jesus. Hey! Hey, 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 hey. Glory to Jesus. Yeah. Glory to Jesus. Your faith. Your faith. Be it unto you according. Hey! I told you it would break out if you believe it. Hey! I said, hey! It is the substance of things hoped for. Faith! Hold it. It is the evidence of things not saying. I've got the faith for it. I've got the faith for it. I've got faith. Yeah, man, I did it. Hey, ho, oh, oh. ho. We'll bless him. We'll bless him. We'll bless him. We'll bless him. Oh, bless him. I'm sorry, y'all. Oh, bless him. Yo. Can I get 20 of y'all that's really saved for real? And say the devil is a liar. Come on. Oh, no, I said I took out. The devil's a liar. The devil's a liar. Open your mouth. Devil, you're a liar. Say that you're a liar. You're the father of lies. You're a liar from the beginning. I believe God. Oh, I could get happy there. He's a liar. Hey, he's a liar. He's a liar. You can't trust nothing he say. He's a liar. The truth ain't in here. I said the truth is not in here. Hey, the truth ain't in here. The truth ain't in here. Oh, boy. The devil is alive. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.